You want to sell crack, don't you? <laughs> Hello, friends. My name is Brandon Dayton. I'm your humble narrator. Welcome to Steam. Hey, it's Steam. Everybody loves Steam, right? 2,500 something games and counting. And uh, currently, we're looking at the Steam Awards, which I've already voted in, largely because, um, yeah, I've, I've tried to record this video about three times. The first time, it was deleted by my darling baby boy. Basically, he pulled the plug <laughs> before anything finished saving, so that was okay, I guess. Uh, after that, we had the issue that I was trying to collab with Nico the Legend, and Nico simply couldn't figure out how to send me his audio file, or he sent me something, but the audio was complete trash, and I just refused to do that to your guys' earbuds. So, we're going to record it for a third time. Uh, basically, the votes are already cast. You can pretty clearly see what games I voted for. So, this is basically going to be a justification, a description of why I voted for those things. So, uh, the Steam Awards, hey! December 31st is when it ends, which is pretty close. I missed out on probably some views because uh, I didn't get it up as early as I did last year, but you know what? That's all right. We're going to uh, keep moving forward. You've chosen the nominees, and we need your help in choosing the winners. I didn't choose any winners. or <laughs> I didn't choose any nominees. I probably chose at least one winner just by coincidence, but I'm also uh, sticking with my conviction uh, as far as like what the award is called you know a lot of these games are just kind of on here because popularity contest uh but i like to vote based on what the actual award stipulates um so yeah i didn't nominate any anything i guess that's all right i i missed out on a badge or some shit but we'll live <laughs> i don't i don't uh put too much investment in uh the number of my Steam profile. Uh, it's mostly all about the games for me, yo. Anyways, the categories we have are Game of the Year, VR Game of the Year, Labor of Love, Better with Friends, Most Innovative Gameplay, Outstanding Story Rich Game, Best Game You Suck At, and Outstanding Visual Style. You can see what I voted for. Maybe you'll remember uh, as, as I scroll down. And we're gonna go fast so there's no spoilers of what the other games are. Boom. Although you probably also voted, <laughs> which, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't blame you for that. It's been a while. Anyways, the nominees for Outstanding Visual Style, we have Grizz, which is basically a platformer. Very artsy-fartsy, not necessarily my style, seems like it's trying a little bit too hard. Total War Three Kingdoms, big, big franchise, big, big visual style. Lots and lots of dudes stabbing each other with pointy sticks, that's always nice. Astroneer! It is on my wish list. It is what I voted for. It has a huge community apparently, and uh, it's also on sale for the Steam uh, Winter Sale, so I won't probably pick it up. It's not quite discounted enough, but I guess that's alright. Katana Zero, kind of retro-y. Uh, it's got that, you know, Japanese aesthetic and also pixel style. It's alright looking. And then Subnautica Below Zero. The original Subnautica was absolutely fucking amazing. I loved everything about it. Below Zero seems to have a lot of white, uh, which is great if you're a fan of snow and, and white, but uh, it doesn't strike me as something with an outstanding visual style necessarily. It looks kind of like the first Subnautica with just uh, a little more bells and whistles attached. So obviously my vote was Astroneer. Largely because if you go to an alien planet, you don't know what color everything is going to be necessarily. There's a lot of space games out there that stick with more of a uh, black and gray and, you know, <laughs> just a bunch of shades and tones rather than uh, going completely neon or pastel, which is, you know, it's a really nice thing to see. So I did vote for Astroneer as my very first choice and... Who knows? It might win. Um, Grizz would probably be my, my second choice. Uh, kind of begrudgingly, you know. It, like I said, it does seem like it's trying a little bit too hard to be something artsy, but you can't deny the fact that it is a pretty good looking game. Uh, after that, I would probably place Katana Zero just because I have a weakness for the retro aesthetic. 
really it's not necessarily an outstanding visual style, at least in my opinion. Despite the amount of retro and pixel style games that I play, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it strikes me as outstanding. So, really, Astroneer and Grizz are the two outstanding ones on this list. And then Katana, Subnautica, Three Kingdoms, in that order, would be uh, the, the follow-ups there. Not, it's not that I don't like Total War Three Kingdoms. Uh, it definitely does have an outstanding visual style, but... Yeah, it doesn't strike me as doing anything interesting, especially there's been many Total War games and as far as I can tell, not a whole lot different is going on with this Total War game. Not that I probably would pick it up even if there was because it's it's simply not my jam necessarily, uh, but I do know a lot of people that like it so I'm not surprised to see that it was nominated. As far as what is going to win, I'm going to put my money on Total War. It's my bottom pick, but I think that it's a really popular series and people will probably get behind it. So, anyways, that's outstanding visual style. I suppose we should move on from this. But, uh, yeah, Astroneer, good to see you on here and I hope that you win, personally. Best of luck to all the entries. Oh my god, my friends have been playing Grizz recently. I watched a little bit of, uh, a little bit of gameplay through, through a, a Steam stream. And it, it actually does look pretty cool, but it's probably not something that I'll pick up for myself unless it ends up bundled or something like that. Anyways, like I said, let's go, let's go, let's go. Best game you suck at. All right. Hooray. This is uh, a really good category for me because I love games that kick my ass. Mordhau is one of them. Kind of looks like an updated version of Chivalry, at least in my opinion. Then you've got Code Vein. Hey, Monster Hunters. <laughs> you ready to hunt some more monsters? Yeah, I guess so. Whatever. Uh, hunt Showdown is what I picked for this because it's basically the only game on this list that I have played. And it definitely kicked my ass when I was playing it. Remnant from the Ashes. Not heard much about this game. It gives me also kind of Monster Hunter vibes. But um, yeah, it's not something that has really caught my attention. Finally, you've got Mortal Kombat 11, which is probably the weirdest pick for this list, I think. I don't think of fighting games as, like, things that I suck at, necessarily, especially if you're not playing online. If you if you play online any fighting game, you're gonna get your shit twisted. That's just how it goes sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, playing through the single-player story, even on the hardest mode, you can kind of cheese AI bots in fighting games, and it doesn't end up being all that difficult, at least in my past experience. Who knows? Maybe Mortal Kombat 11 will break the mold, they crank up the AI, um... But yeah, it doesn't seem necessarily like something that I, I go out of my way to call uh, a really difficult game. So, Hunt Showdown. Let me talk about Hunt Showdown for just a minute. Um, my god, this game is fucking glorious. It's got a combination of PvE, PvP, and boss battles, and you can basically pick and choose what you want to do. Um, Nico the Legend and I played this game for about maybe five to eight episodes something like that there are episodes of this on the channel if you'd like to watch those uh just search up dayton does hunt showdown and i don't know why they changed it to, to just hunt but i guess it works just fine anyways uh those those three types pve pvp boss battles are really really cool uh when combined together you basically run around do a little bit of pve level up your dudes and then you can start thinking about the boss battles and the PvP aspects of the game. Um, and once you spend a couple hours leveling up your hunter, there's also permadeath in the game, so it can be really, really painful if things take a bad turn. Especially if you get caught up in PvE. It's it's the worst feeling ever to have your fucking hunter die in a PvP or PvE uh, setting. If you get PvP, it's like, okay, that's fine, I guess. Not ideal, but fine. Uh, but yeah, dying to just regular ass zombies, that's so disappointing. And then uh, the first few times that you fight the boss are probably also going to to ruin your day. 
you should probably take a few low level hunters in there and just uh, experiment a bit before you take your big boys in there and try to do something. But anyways, uh, definitely had a good time with Hunt Showdown. Nico and I have decided that it is something that we will be going back to. I do have it re-downloaded again. I've been brushing up just a little bit. So ho hopefully you guys will see that soon once I have something worth showing off. I don't want to, you know, waste anybody's time, really. Unless you want your time wasted, in which case, come on over. Come on through. Um, after Hunt Showdown, I would probably pick Mordhau. It's the game that appeals the most to me. Like I said, it reminds me a bit of an updated chivalry, but... Uh, Nico had mentioned once you put about 20 hours into the game, you're going to be like really pretty good at it and uh, probably not sucking as much. But that's that's part of the fun, you know? You put your time in, okay, now you get to be good at the game. <laughs> so that's how most games go, honestly. Even Chivalry. But yeah, it's definitely a good looking game. I I would love to pick it up if it were at a cheaper price. But I don't think it'll be at a cheaper price anytime soon. At least not cheaper than the Steam Winter Sale. Just because it it was pretty successful as far as I could tell. It seems a, a pretty popular game. Code Vein, also another game that probably doesn't need any help. And it's going to be the third slot on the list. And yeah, I I really like the the look of it, you know. But I already have Monster Hunter, so I don't... I don't really need another Monster Hunter game. It's not really my jam, necessarily. Um, I do like the strategy aspect to it, of catching different monsters and stuff like that, but from what I've seen of trailers and things like this, it looks more like a brawly kind of thing, and I could be completely wrong on that, but I'm, I'm just going off what I've been shown by the marketing, which hopefully is is completely off, but I'm I'm not sure about that. Remnant from the Ashes will take the uh, third slot, or the fourth slot. This is basically a game that I'm not extremely interested in. Again, kind of Monster hunter -y vibes, but I don't like the aesthetic as much as I do in Code Vein. And uh, I don't know as much about the developers as I do about Bandai Namco. So, it, it seems like an okay game. You know, people seem to be buying it, so... <laughs> I'm not going to tell you not to if, you, if it's something that you enjoy, but I don't think it's for me. Uh, finally, Mortal Kombat 11 is, is the bottom spot on this list. I really don't know why it's on here. Like I said, uh, fighting games, it's really easy to cheese the AI. You probably, you know, it will be a best game you suck at if you get online with it, but that's not why I play fighting games generally. I'm, yeah, I'm out to have a good time with friends and family in fighting games and in that situation I'm generally not so sucky at it <laughs> so yeah that's a bit of anecdotal evidence but in my extremely tiny circle of friends and family I'm I'm not too sucky most of the time uh, anyways that's that's the list for best game you suck at hunt Mordhau, code vein remnant Mortal Kombat 11 final verdict Oh yes, um, I think that's it. That's all I want to say about this. So I gotta move on to the next category. Outstanding story rich game. Hooray! Plague Tale Innocence. It's all about the Black Plague. Probably rife with drama, but I've also heard that it's a short game, so I don't know about that one right there. Disco Elysium. Oh yes, I absolutely love it. Uh, no combat, lots of story, lots of, uh, lots of story. That's what this is about. So, I I'm rocking with Disco Elysium. Far Cry New Dawn takes place after Far Cry 5. Looks really fucking awesome. Not necessarily sure if a, a shooter can have too much story involved in it. Gears 5, kind of the same story. I've never been big into the Gears franchise, so I can't speak on this one as much as I can about Far Cry. And then finally, you've got Greedfall, which looks friggin' awesome. Um, I've heard that the scale is just a little bit smaller than most people would want or expect, but that seems to be just fine. This is this is the one game that Nico nominated for an award, and uh, like I said, I didn't nominate a damn thing because I just I just procrastinated, much like I've procrastinated on this video. Actually, I didn't procrastinate on this video. I made this fucking video three times, but. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> I procrastinated on making it three times. Anyways, I digress. So, my pick is Disco Elysium. It did win at the Game Awards. Fantastic game with a fantastic visual style. You're basically a cop, you run around either helping people or destroying people's lives, which I think is pretty cool. There is not one little bit of combat in the entire game, which lets me know that they're relying mostly on the dialogue, mostly on the story, and it is a game that's on my wish list. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and disclose that at the moment, but I really like what the game has to offer. It has definitely caught my eye for multiple reasons. And I have great faith that it, it is an outstanding story-rich game. Um, probably my next pick would be Greedfall. Uh, really, really nice. It is an open-world game. Like I said, it lacks a little bit of content based on what I've seen, but sometimes that's okay. The studio is relatively small, and it performed extremely well for that studio. So... Uh, it's doing the job that it's meant to do. I think Greedfall has some good stuff about it. Not as good as Disco Elysium, but I won't hold that against it. Plague Tale Innocence, like I said, pretty short. Uh, it's got a nice visual style to it. It's definitely an interesting period in history that we don't hear much about. I'd really like to have a follow-up to Plague Tale where you get to like roll around as a plague doctor, get your big beak mask, whatever stuff full of flowers and stuff and uh try and cure people from the plague or something like that that could be really really cool uh as it is it's like okay well my family's dying what a rich what a rich and original story um i'm not gonna talk too much shit about it it does look like a pretty cool game if it wasn't so damn short i would consider uh picking it up as it is i'll have to wait I have to wait around till it's in a bundle or a sale or maybe maybe never because it's not even on my wish list. So I like it, but not enough to wish list it. Um, and then the two the two games that I don't necessarily believe have very much story at all would be Far Cry and Gears. Now Far Cry definitely has a good story to it. Uh, I really like. All of the Far Cry games. I played absolutely all of them and I fucking love them. There's always some humor and some intrigue and political statements inserted into them, but I don't know if you can actually call that story rich. There's not a lot of character development, there's not a lot of uh, plot that takes place. It's like there's just one overarching plot. There's a bad guy, go get the bad guy. And, um, yeah, that. That doesn't scream outstanding story rich game to me. Kind of the same story with Gears, although I don't have as much experience with it. It just seems like, okay, go shoot some aliens. Alright, bro. I, I can handle that. And, uh, yeah. I've, I've never really been interested in the Gears franchise, basically because it's trying really hard to be, like, super cool, you know? I remember seeing advertisements on TV and they're like, look, these dudes are getting aliens with a chainsaw. And I'm like, well, uh, if I was a bit younger, <laughs> I might be into that. But I, I was young then, but I thought I was too old. You know what I mean? It's weird how time works. Anyways, uh, Disco Elysium, my first pick. Greedfall, my second. Plague Tale, my third. Far Cry 4, Gears 5 is fifth. I guess that's fitting. Um, probably what I think is gonna win, man, I want it to be Disco Elysium, I'm gonna say Gears 5, just because I like to, I like to be a contrarian and say, this is the one that's in the fist, the fist slot, but it's probably gonna win. Um, like I said, a lot of the Steam Awards is just a popularity contest. Last year I named, uh, my video, Does Democracy Work? And we ended up... <laughs> We ended up voting in PUBG as the game of the year, so the definitive answer for that was no, democracy does not work. Uh, but whatever, it looks like it's going to be a, a bit more promising this year. They vetted the uh, nominations just a little bit better, so I can only be appreciative for that. Anyways, I've rambled enough, let's move on from Story Rich Game into Most Innovative Gameplay. Yes. Experimentation, another thing that I really enjoy in games, uh, that is one of the main reasons I voted for Hunt Showdown. 
Anyways, first game is Baba is You, indie puzzle game where you push around blocks to change the rules of the stage in order to solve the puzzles. Really cool. Slay the Spire, roguelike card game. I have 30 hours in it. I really, really love it. My friend Pedro, I've been watching since the Devolver Digital Conference, and it looks pretty cool. Uh, I haven't dropped any money on it yet, but I do like the look of it. Oxygen Not Included was on my wish list for a little while until I removed it because I have so many crafting survival games already. Planet Zoo, I requested a key for this as a follow-up to my Jurassic World Evolution series, but uh, I was refused for that key, so I'm a little bit salty about Planet Zoo. I guess I'm not going to hold too many grudges, but... My my vote for the most innovative gameplay was definitely Baba Is You. It's really the only game on this list that is, without a doubt, pushing boundaries. You know what I mean? There's not a whole lot of other games that will let you change the rules of the game. And I think that's the beauty of puzzle games. I don't play a lot of puzzle games, but uh, I can definitely appreciate them. The, the ability for a puzzle game to go so far outside the box is extremely impressive and uh it's demonstrated in baba is you i thought about picking it up for the the winter sale but yeah i know that i would probably not play it past the first few levels so i'm like all right i'll vote for it but i don't own it or wishlist it i'm basically just going off the the title the most innovative of these games that are listed is definitely baba is you my Second slot would probably go to Slay the Spire. Uh, that's just a personal preference. I really, really love the way that you can build the three different characters in Slay the Spire. Three different characters. Each character probably has about three or four different ways that you could build them. Uh, I don't know why people would say that this game is extremely innovative. I've played a lot of deck building card games and roguelikes before and... I guess it does combine those two things admirably, but overall I don't think that it does anything too too groundbreaking. Uh, same story with my friend Pedro. My friend Pedro looks awesome, you know? It's kind of a platformer, kind of a shooter, meshes those two things well. It's got some cool mechanics. Kick a fly frying pan up in the air, flying pan. Then it does become a flying pan when you kick it in the air. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, once you kick it up there, you start shooting it with bullets, the bullets ricochet and fucking bounce off into all the enemies that are surrounding you, and, I mean, that's just really cool. It's got a really nice style to it. I've been watching it for quite some time, still haven't gone for it yet, but who knows, that might change in the future. However, uh, despite my like for it, despite my interest in it, it doesn't strike me as an innovative game. Uh, we've seen a lot of 2D shooters and stuff. Mostly really like kind of more indie titles. The fact that Devolver Digital would publish one is I guess not surprising. Devolver Digital publishes all kinds of stuff, but um Yeah. I haven't seen a a 2D shooter game that's been this interesting to me. This this Yeah, this tantalizing <laughs> before. So I'm sure I'll pick up my friend Pedro at some point, but uh, for now it's just kind of meh as far as the innovation goes, at least in my opinion. Uh, oxygen not including crafting survival. This is probably my fourth choice. Um, it, it, I'm sure it has some innovative stuff as well in it, but uh, it is it is a crafting survival game. Granted, it's in space, but we did craft the world on the channel. That's crafting survival, isn't it? <laughs> There's, there's not a whole lot in Oxygen Not Included that that grips me and says, Hey, we're doing something new here. You should definitely get in on this because it's something new and exciting. Uh, I like the art style. I like the genre. That's largely why I was on the wish list. And then I realized that I'd probably never play it, even if I did end up getting it. So I removed it from my wish list. Uh, Planet Zoo. I swear it's not because I'm salty, but we've seen simulator games before like okay you can build your zoo and your environment and pick your animals and whoopee doo I guess it's more interactive than something like Dino Park Tycoon or Parkosaurus <laughs> and it's not dinosaurs it's it's 
zoo animals, which I guess wins at some points for innovation, but even then, we've seen zoo simulators before, uh, maybe not ones that are as in-depth, but yeah, I can't, I can't really sing the praises of Planet Zoo, uh, especially because I didn't get a key. Come on, bros. <laughs> I swear I'm not salty, though. So, yeah, Planet Zoo would be in the fifth slot. Um, I really wish I could say something more for it. Uh, as a concept, it, it, it's obviously awesome, you know. I love animals. That's one of my, my, my interests since I was a little kid. I want to learn about all the animals and interesting facts. I feel like that fucking guy in the Jumanji movie that's like the zoologist. He's like, you know, the ostrich runs 60 miles an hour. <laughs> and then everybody's just like, what are you talking about, Dayton? What a non sequitur. We don't care. All right. Well, I just thought I'd share with you. Anyways, um, yeah. My order, Baba is you, Slay the Spire, my friend Pedro, Oxygen Not Included, Planet Zoo. They listed those perfectly, and uh, I'll, I'll fight anybody on that. As far as most innovative goes, it's it's really not a contest between between these games. I voted for a game that I have not wishlisted, have not even heard of, but uh, yeah, the concept of it just just blew me out of the water when I when I found out about it. So I probably won't even end up picking it up, but I'll be damned if it's not innovative as hell. Uh, as far as what's going to win, mm, Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire will probably win. It's a very, very popular game, and for good reason. I put 30 hours in because, yeah, it's it's fun to play. Even with only three characters, they are working on a fourth, by the way, but only with three characters, it's still really awesome to jump in and try different strategies. Okay, I think we're good. So we'll move on to the next category, and that is Better with Friends. Which, I don't have that many friends, you want me to be honest. Uh, Risk of Rain 2, definitely a game that I bought, one of the only new games that I bought this year. And no regrets for that, that is a fucking awesome game. Uh, Dota Underlords, it's free to play, you can go try it out if you want, but Dota just puts such a bad taste in my mouth. Age of Empires 2, alright, cool. Get a little strategy, a little empire building. I guess it's better with friends, but mm, I, I can enjoy a single player game just fine. Ring of Elysium, y'all like battle royales? I heard y'all like battle royales, so here's another battle royale. <laughs> okay, great, super, thanks. And Daisy, oh, Daisy's another one that puts kind of a bad taste in my mouth. I bought Daisy back in the day when uh, you couldn't get Steam refunds and stuff like that, so I was basically stuck with it. It was in fucking development hell, nothing going on for years, two, three years at least, maybe more than that. Uh, and finally they've decided to fucking do something with it. Far too late in my opinion, I'm I'm not eager to like re-download DayZ and be like, well what's changed you guys, I'm super glad I spent money on this now. Uh, because I'm not. Because I'm still not. <laughs> Maybe that'd change if I actually do jump back in. But, okay. Let us talk about my choice. Risk of Rain 2. It was a risky title. You know, they went from the original Risk of Rain, which is just like 2D side-scrolling. It was super fun. I spent hours in Risk of Rain trying to unlock all the classes and stuff, but... Risk of Rain 2 just takes it to a whole new level. It can be a little bit frustrating when you've got enemies flying above your head and you've got to locate them. Obviously, it's a lot harder to do so in a 3D space than a 2D space. You've got a whole extra fucking dimension to think about. But the boss battles are awesome, the unlockable classes, although they are mostly the same, at least called the same, they do perform a little bit differently than they did in their, their 2D version. So I think that's really, really cool. There's plenty of stuff to unlock, characters and items, and um, yeah, it, it is definitely better with friends, is what the, the question is. <laughs> so you can play Risk of Rain by yourself, but if you've got somebody by your side, watching your back, checking out where those drones or whatever are shooting you from the sky, you're going to be that much better off. 
and Risk of Rain 2 is definitely without a doubt the one game that I would like to play with a friend. Um, my second choice would probably be Age of Empires. I can enjoy that with a friend, largely for strategy games I want to play alone. I want to beat the crap out of the AI. Uh, but yeah, it's it's okay with friends too. You know, generally it's me being carried because strategy games are, are not my forte necessarily, but that's okay. Um, if my friends would like to play that, then then I'm happy to. It's not as bad as something like, say, Ring of Elysium, my third spot on the list. Uh, Battle Royale games are just so... I'm so over it, for the most part. I did do a Fortnite video recently, but it was kind of just trying to test it out. I guess I gotta go test out Ring of Elysium now before I start talking too much shit about it just because of the genre that it's in. It looks kind of cool, I gotta admit that, but um, yeah, as far as mechanics and stuff like that go, don't know too much about it, so we'll have to see. It looks like there's like hero classes and stuff. It's kind of like Rainbow Six Siege meets a Battle Royale, which that could be interesting, you know, as long as you can unlock the characters and it's not behind a paywall or anything like that. Speaking of behind a paywall, uh, Dota. No, no, I put Daisy in the four slot. <laughs> I'm not gonna let Daisy get beat out by Dota. Um,. Yeah, I talked a lot about this already. I really, really don't like the way that the development for this game went. I will probably have to revisit it soon. Is it better with friends? <laughs> if you can subject your friends in good conscience to Daisy, I'm sure it's awesome. Um, games like this, open world survival, Daisy and Rust and things like that, obviously you'll do a lot better the more people you have in your crew. If you're a solo player, you're you're gonna get bullied a lot by people who have, you know, three or four players or even just two other players. You're going to get pushed around by them. Unless you don't give a shit about dying, in which case just whatever, open fire. <laughs> as soon as they come up and try to take your beans, you're like, You take these beans from my cold dead fingers, pa pow And then and then you start over from zero and have to go fucking find a backpack, find a gun. If you're lucky, I mean, yeah, a lot of times I don't even find a gun. I just end up dead. Hopefully they've increased loot in DayZ quite a bit. But, but like I said, I'm not eager to go back and check it out. Um, Dota Underlords, relatively new release, free to play. I don't think that I'm going to be playing it. It's never been something that captured me. I don't really enjoy Dota, uh, either the game or the fan base. <laughs> And it might be I don't enjoy the game because of the fan base. It's just extremely toxic and pretty uninteresting, all things considered. I mean, I uploaded League of Legends videos, so I guess I can't talk that much shit about Dota uh, because it's like the genesis of the MOBA genre, but I'll still talk shit. <laughs> That's just how it goes. I don't even play MOBAs no mo. I mean, sometimes, if I, if I need to scratch the itch, but uh, yeah. Dota Underlords just just doesn't capture my attention. Uh, like I said, it is free to play, so I might check it out at one point. But I'm not going to say, hey, friends, let's all go in here. Uh, I'd much rather play Risk of Rain 2 with you than Dota or Daisy. Facts. True facts. Alright, so we'll work our way up the list a bit more to the 2019 Labor of Love. Team is well past the first unveiling, but being the good parents they are, they continue to nurture and support their creation. Yes, Warframe Empyrean had tons of updates this year. A fucking crazy amount of updates. Rainbow Six Siege, they've been updating for a while. They didn't go too far outside the box. I fucking love Rainbow Six Siege, but uh, yeah, some new operators, some new maps. It's about what is expected. Operation Shattered Web. Yes, there's uh, cosmetics in Counter-Strike. Did you know that? My god. So, yeah, they're, they're kind of changing up some stuff on Counter-Strike and modernizing it. Uh, Grand Theft Auto V, I think, was here last year. And it's basically just a cash cow. I'm not super impressed by that. And then Dota, which we don't talk about. We don't. That's the game that shall not be named. 
Uh, obviously, I did vote for Warframe, largely because they did the most amount of work this year. They have ships that you can get on and fly around and pirate and board and uh, so much new added stuff. I really, really enjoy Warframe. I've taken a break from it for a while, but when I was streaming, it was always one of the hottest streams that I did. Uh, the community is super active, super helpful, and that is for good reason. The, the devs have built some goodwill in the community, and the game might be grindy, but at the end of the grind, it's, it's definitely worth it. The devs keep their promise that you will be a fucking powerhouse if you keep at it. So, I didn't keep at it. My Warframe is still a baby. Uh, I basically just unlocked the Rhino, and then I'm like, oh, I don't really want to level this up, and ended up uninstalling, but I'll, the nice part about it is I can just come back anytime, pick it up again. Uh, there will probably be a, a, a lot more shit added, and I'll be even further behind, but that's neither here nor there. That's alright. It's not a race, okay? It's only a race with yourself. That's how it goes. Anyways, uh, after Warframe, I would pick Rainbow Six Siege. I'm just weak for Rainbow Six Siege, you know? It's a super fun game. They add interesting operators every single year. Eight new characters in a game. Is it eight? I think it's eight. Uh, generally, six to eight new characters in a game every single year is probably a very difficult thing to balance. And... They, they do it consistently year after year. They brought this game back from the brink of destruction and have made it into one of the, the hottest games out there. And although I haven't played it much this year, um, definitely not as much as I'd like because now there's new operators coming out and I missed the last two because I finally ran out of renown. So uh, I'm going to have to get back to the grind if I want to unlock all the new operators. But I might just let it go for a while and, you know, then I'll have something big to work towards in the future. Uh, and I definitely see Rainbow Six Siege with the future. Just like Warframe, both of these games are going to be around for a long, long time to come. So they are worthy investments for your time and your money, if you are so inclined to do so. Uh, Operation Shattered Web, CSGO. CSGO is all free to play now. So I guess that's cool. Um, yeah. Like I said, CSGO's trying to modernize itself just a little bit more. See all these other games going around with customization, and they're like, hey, maybe we should throw some of that in. And it's also the, the fact that you could probably make some more money out of the customization options. But uh, we're not going to be that cynical. We'll just say it's because the devs love their game, right? Steam, you're not a big corporate overlord. You're not a... You're not a... A giant mogul of the game industry that just wants to make money. Uh, God damn it. Grand Theft Auto 5. Speaking of giant corporate overlords. Uh, yeah, Grand Theft Auto 5 was here last year. I didn't vote for it then. It's probably going to win Labor of Love. I'll be honest with you. But uh, the one that deserves to win the most is Warframe. So we've got Warframe, Rainbow Six Siege, CSGO. GTA 5, the game that shall not be named, in that order. Um, yeah, I, I I enjoy GTA 5, obviously. It's it's cool to roll around and shoot some, sh some shit up, and the story wasn't completely terrible. I mean, Grand Theft Auto always has some trouble with their story mode, but what most people are playing for is online. What Rockstar is mostly geared for is, is online, uh, and they keep coming out with new stuff. Uh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta pay for this car, this helicopter, this, this crack den. You wanna sell crack, don't you? <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, and the fact that I put so many hours into it and have not even a smidgen of what is offered in the game, uh, basically just like all the guns and a couple of cars that aren't even fully upgraded, and yeah put 200 hours into the game for that. I mean, I guess it also includes the story mode, which I played through, but uh, I don't know. It definitely seems like a cash grab to me, and it continues to this day. It works. Hey, if it works, it works, but it ain't gonna work on me. I ain't gonna have it happen. Um, so yeah, Warframe probably the most deserving of this, of this title, of this award. 
but I think that it's going to go to GTA. It might it might go to Rainbow Six Siege. I'd like to see that as well. Um, the, my second place pick. Even if it goes to CS:GO, I guess I guess I can forgive that. But I don't want GTA or Dota to win, honestly. Oh, but I'd prefer GTA to win over Dota. Okay. Anyways, moving on. I, I can't reiterate this shit enough times already. I just I just talk too much. VR game of the year, Beat Saber. It was on here last year. I think I voted for it last year. It it's so fucking sexy. Really, one of the main reasons that I want to get a VR headset. It looks fucking awesome. Blade and sorcery, yeah, dude. Grab some fucking dudes by the head, stab them in the eye with an arrow. You, you can't not like that. Gorn is a more cartoony version of Blade and Sorcery. Uh, I actually was witnessing this being played at the mall in Manila, and it looked fucking amazing. Uh, Borderlands 2 VR, hey, it's a it's another port. Talked about this last year. Basically, they ported Fallout and Skyrim, and I'm like, no reason for that. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, never been my cup of tea necessarily, but I guess that's cool. VR version, why not? Um, so Gorn, why Gorn over Blade and Sorcery? I really like the style, is what it comes down to. Uh, it's more stylistic, there's more blood. The weapon choices also seem a lot more fun in Gorn. Uh, I might be a bit biased because I have actually seen it being actively played. But, yeah, the only the only issues that I could find with Gorn is that some weapons like the stick are not wielded necessarily how you would wield them in real life, but I guess that's sort of the nature of the beast of VR. Uh, I'm sure Beat Saber is not how you hold an actual Beat Saber. But yeah, Go Gorn... Goon. Dragoon. Oh god, they should have a VR Dragoon. Oh my god, can you imagine? Like a giant fucking set of controls and shit, like all rendered in VR, so you hit the wrong switch all the time. God, that would be fun. Anyways, um, yeah. I really like the look of Gorn. Uh, Beat Saber, it's, it's in my heart too. Those three games, Blade and Sorcery, Beat Saber, and Gorn, all look fucking awesome. Amazing reasons to pick up a VR headset. I'm super, super happy that VR is starting to come into its own. I do get a little frustrated when I see VR titles and I'm like, I'd really like to play that game, but I can't because I don't have a VR headset. Uh, but yeah, it's it's cool that VR is able to come and do its own. It's good motivation to pick up a VR headset someday or at least add it to the, the laundry list of things that I would like. So uh, yeah, I'm going to put Gorn first, Blade and Sorcery second, Beat Saber third. Uh, it's interesting to me that I voted Beat Saber last year, and this year Beat Saber has dropped a third. Why is that, Dayton? Well, I suck at rhythm games, if you want me to be completely honest. I go to the arcade, I sit down to fucking do some rhythm game shenanigans, and I just end up getting frustrated. I don't think I would be any good at Beat Saber. I'd play, like, the baby songs, and as soon as I try to step it up, I'll be fucking disappointed. Whereas... Beating the shit out of dudes, I can totally understand that. I can get behind that. <laughs> That's totally fine. So, uh, yeah, I think Gorn and Blade and Sorcery are, are a bit more simple, but uh, games that I could enjoy infinitely more than, than Beat Saber or Borderlands or fucking Five Nights at Freddy's. So, yeah, those three are the top, and then you've got Five Nights at Freddy's and Borderlands 2 at the bottom. Uh, I'm... Like, why not make an original Borderlands title, you know? It's not been that long since the new Borderlands came out, but to have a new Borderlands title release entirely in VR would be an awesome thing. Uh, I say that largely because I'm not a fan, a huge fan anyways. I kind of like it, <laughs> but I'm, I'm not going to go out and buy the newest game as soon as it drops. Uh, but yeah, it would be totally cool to have a, a the new Borderlands be a VR only title you know kind of push that VR through I guess uh, there's no reason for them to do it there's a reason that fucking uh, Steam came out I was like hey here's that new Half-Life you wanted and it's VR only because they've got fucking they've got a stake in VR they've got their their Steam VR but yeah really really cool games I'm super happy to see VR being pushed forward 
Eventually, at some point, I'm sure I will get a headset and be able to play one of these, but it might not be for another 5-10 years. Let the fucking technology catch up and the prices drop just a little bit, and I'll be like, alright, now it's my time to play these games that I wanted to play fucking <laughs> a decade ago. <laughs> Whatever. When we get we get to it when we get to it. Uh, I'm a I'm a patient gamer, you know. That might be one of the reasons that my channel doesn't blow up because I fucking play games that are a decade and a half old, like Morrowind. But that's all right. I don't worry none too much about that. Uh, we're just here to have a good time, talk about the Steam Wars. That's okay, isn't it? Everything's okay here. But yeah, I've ranted enough. Um, VR games. I'll see you someday. Hang in there, buddies. Hopefully they'll come out with some stuff that's not a fucking port in the future. Moving on to the big one, the daddy, the game of the year. Oh my god, there's so many good games. I didn't think that this was a big year for gaming, I was fucking wrong. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is the game that I voted for. Fucking gorgeous, amazing difficulty, which like I've mentioned a few times in this list, I really like difficulty. Uh, Resident Evil 2, kind of a remake. I guess that's cool. I, I, I don't like VR remakes, but, um, yeah. I don't know. Jedi Fallen Order. This game looks fucking awesome. Made by Respawn. Respawn is teaching EA how to do the fucking thing, for sure. Destiny 2. Alright. Uh, it's always seemed more like a bro looter shooter, which doesn't appeal to me, but a lot of people seem to like it. And then you've got Devil May Cry 5. Devil May Cry, interesting series. Uh, they've had a few missteps, but yeah, it's really good to see that the fifth one is performing quite well. Uh, so my pick was Sekiro. Why is that? Because of the brutal difficulty. Ah, oh, we had some Christmas carolers, so... <laughs> what a Merry Christmas Eve Eve that I'm having. Um, so yeah, Sekiro, what was I saying? It's brutal. <laughs> it's brutal is the main reason that I like it. The aesthetic is really, really nice as well. Obviously, it's gotten a lot of acclaim. It's on my wish list. It's one of the only ones on this list that is on my wish list. Um, and I'd really, really like to play it. Get back to that, that Souls feeling. If you like Dark Souls, if you like Bloodborne, you're guaranteed to like Sekiro. Uh, the next one, I would put Jedi Fallen Order. Respawn Entertainment has really made a name for themselves. They went from Titanfall, dropped Apex Legends with absolutely no build-up to it, and it took off. It's still going. Uh, a lot of people still play in that game. Uh, and yeah, they, they can apparently make single-player content as well, because Jedi Fallen Order is sick as fuck. I've watched a few streams of it, and my goodness, it is amazing. They've also got a little droid called BD-1, which obviously stands for Brandon Dayton, is number one. And he's also so humble, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I love I love uh, Jedi Fallen Order, and I would love to get my hands on it. I don't think it's on my wish list, but I'm going to change that right after this video. Um, my pick after that would be Devil May Cry 5. Devil May Cry, like I said, has had a few missteps. There's been a few flops as far as the series goes, but I think that's sort of an inevitability in any series that is willing to change and take risks. And the the lore of Devil May Cry 5, of course, is really awesome as well. Who doesn't like running around with fucking swords, slashing the shit out of things, and yeah, beating up devils, you know? <laughs> that's good stuff right there. And, uh, probably Resident Evil 2 would be in the fourth slot. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of remakes, unless the remake does something different. De Resident Evil 2 does do something different, obviously with the camera angle and stuff like that. So that's cool, but, uh, it's not necessarily something that I'm itching to play or anything like that. I'm also not really into, like, horror as much. Horror! I was going to say survival horror. But, um, I do love a good survival game. Uh, it's just the horror aspect that is like, okay, well, I don't get it too much. My wife is the one that likes horror, and, uh, the game is way too slow-paced for her. She wants a game that you could jump into and just 
blast people in the face, like Killing Floor 2, which is the reason that it's creeping up in my Steam account. It has almost 400 hours now, which is fucking crazy! Like, at least half of those are, are wifey, so, yeah, impressive. Um, then after Resident Evil 2, of course, is Destiny 2, which, like I said, kind of bro, bro-style shooter looter. Uh, much like Destiny 1, it dropped and didn't didn't do too well, kind of bare bones, and then they added more content later, which I'm starting to suspect is some sort of marketing strategy. They're like, oh, the game's not that good, but look, we worked on it, and it's like, I think you just... I think you just held content back at first and then added it later and you're like, wow, look at all these improvements we've made. Um, so yeah, I'm not really a fan of Destiny. Uh, obviously Bungie's pretty cool. I've been playing a lot of Halo recently because that was one of my birthday gifts, which yeah, I, I still am not very good at the multiplayer in Halo, but I infinitely enjoy the story and trying to struggle my way through through legendary mode I played it already through on on the normal mode and I guess I should do hard before I go back and try and do legendary uh, and then I also get distracted by the multiplayer a whole heck of a lot but yeah I like Halo I like Halo so it's interesting that I I don't like Destiny 2 I've given it a fair shake you know what I mean I've tried to play Destiny before but yeah, maybe maybe shooter looters just aren't my, aren't my thing because it's it's largely the same story for for Borderlands. It's not my cup of tea necessarily. But yeah, if you want to get your ass kicked by by Sekiro, uh, if you want to have a good time, awesome multiplayer story or single player story. What the fuck, brain? Um, I guess I guess because I'm a little sick. I'm a little sicky. My brain's not functioning properly, but. Gotta get, gotta get this video out at some point, goddammit. <laughs> I said I would, so here it is. Um, yeah, so Sekiro is first, Jedi Fallen Order second, Devil May Cry third, and then the, the two that I'm not really interested in playing, Resident Evil and Destiny. Uh, Destiny, obviously, in the, the very bottom slot. But none of these games are terrible, you know, obviously they are game of the year for a reason. I'd really like to see some fucking indie titles get up here. I bought a game recently called Kind Words that is basically just uh, a chat platform. You post requests and tell people about your problems and your fears and they send you a message back that uh, basically tells you everything's going to be okay. And sometimes that is just what we need. Uh, I did end up gifting that to a couple of people for Christmas. so. Hopefully they will enjoy it as much as I have enjoyed it. You know, I, I enjoy giving advice, but there's also points where I need to get advice and don't want to be fucking judged for it, uh, either by friends or family or even a semi-anonymous platform on the internet. Uh, yeah, it's really nice that Kind Words allows me to be completely anonymous when I'm asking uh, some fucked up questions. Or not even that fucked up, because I guess we all go through it, but... I digress. It's a really awesome game. That's what I would like to see win Game of the Year. I'd really like to see some indie titles on here, but with the choices that we're given, I, I'm definitely going to pick Sekiro. I think that Jedi Fallen Order is probably the one that's going to take it home, mostly because it's the newest title in this list, and people are still really excited for it. For good reason, too. Um, yeah, I've, I've got a big boner for Respawn Entertainment now. Anything that comes out from them, I'm going to be keeping an eye on it. Uh, because, yeah, they've, they've proven their worth in multiple genres of gaming. So that is pretty impressive in itself. Anyways, I guess we'll go back and recap. Game of the Year, I voted for Sekiro. I think Fallen Order is going to win. VR Game of the Year, I voted for Gorn. I think Beat Saber is going to win. Labor of Love, I voted for Warframe. I think CSGO is going to win. Maybe Rainbow Six Siege. Hopefully not GTA or Dota. <laughs> Better with Friends, I voted for Risk of Rain 2. I think Ring of Elysium is probably going to win. I don't know how popular it is actually, but uh, I really hope that Risk of Rain wins instead. Uh, most innovative game claim, Baba is You is what I voted for. I think Slay the Spire is probably the one that's going to take it home though. 
Outstanding story rich game. I voted for Disco Elysium. I think Gears 5 is uh, too popular to not win uh, when compared with all these other games. Far Cry is also probably a good uh, a good vote, but yeah, Gears 5 is, is probably going to take it home. I think I might eat my words. Best game you suck at Hunt is the uh, the vote for me, but I think maybe Code Vein. Code Vein or Mordhau, I'm leaning towards Code Vein, is going to take it home. Um, outstanding visual style, I voted for Astroneer. I'm going to say Three Kingdoms will probably take it, but I hope I hope that it's Astroneer. So, that is the Steam Awards, friend. I've been ranting about this for far too long, this fucking double, double the length of the first iteration uh, of last year's video. So, yeah. I definitely had a lot to say, but I hope that you enjoyed it and were able to uh, to gain something from it. I thank you so so much for joining me on a sicky sicky Christmas Eve. Uh, I'm hoping that Santa will bring me some zinc to make me feel better, but uh, yeah, it's all right. We're gonna get some content out. Uh, 2020 is gonna be my year. I swear it. We're basically leaning into vlogs and things like that. I, I definitely got to be more uh, consistent with my uploads and stuff like that. So it's something that I need to work on. I, I used to do it really consistently, but it was eating up my life, you know? So I've got a wife and kids and can't upload every single day, but at least maybe twice a week, every other day. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what we can make it work. Uh, but yeah, there I go ranting again. Once again, friends, thank you so much for joining me for the Steam Awards 2019. I hope that you've enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What did you vote for? What do you think is going to win? I do want to know. I respond to each and every comment, and, uh, even if they're trolly, <laughs> I'll leave them up there. I'll troll you back a little bit. Anyways, thank you once again for watching, friends. Don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy this video. I hope that you'll check out the links in the description. Hang out with me just a little bit more on Twitter, Discord, Patreon. Hey, big shout out to Nico the Legend though for supporting on the Patreon. I appreciate that a lot. He also uh, is the one that bought me Master Chief Collection. And he also bought me fucking Red Dead Redemption 2. What? What a merry birthday and Christmas that boy has made. I wish I wish I had more money to like get him code vein or something that he wants, but um yeah, I'm not in a position in my life to do that at the moment. Uh maybe once kids grow up and are out of the house 20 years down the road when we're still friends because I know we will be that uh, I'll be able to do all that stuff for him. But anyways, I hope that you've enjoyed. Once again, friends, this has been the Steam Award 2019. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I'm going to get out of here, go have a little nap, and leave this video to render. And I hope to see you in the next one, whatever we decide to do next. And until then, friends, bye-bye.